We now present The Adventures of Marco Polo. Marco Polo, intrepid adventurer and explorer, a man who discovered a myriad of strange things in various parts of the world, a man whose stories were disbelieved in the 13th century when he lived, but explorers in latter years proved that Marco Polo had spoken the truth. At the age of 18, Marco Polo was a pleasure-loving, carefree youth who contemplated marriage with a frivolous girl named Giuliana Vecchi. Marco Polo's father, Niccolo, and his uncle, Matteo, desired the young man to take a journey to Persia, but he refused. Marco Polo defied his uncle and his father, and he decided to elope with Giuliana. On the night when the elopement was planned, Marco Polo went with his servant to the steps of Giuliana's home in Venice. And as the gondola drew alongside, Marco Polo was roughly seized, and he heard the voice of his father ordering that he be bound by ropes, and he was told that in spite of himself, he was to be taken to Persia. Hours later, the young man found himself on a vessel, securely bound to a bunk in one of the cabins. Then the door opened and his father entered. So, father, you have come at last. I demand to be released. Marco, my son, know you that I have a father's love for you. And because of that love, I must help you to find your manhood. Where are you taking me? You are at present on one of my own vessels, bound for the port of Biron, from whence you commence your overland journey to Persia. What sort of a father are you to send your son to certain death? Why do you desire to be rid of me? Why do you thwart me in my search of happiness? Know you, Marco, that I would not ask you to go where I will not go. You must learn to bear the burden of your responsibility, to be proud of your Venetian birthright. I am coming with you to Persia. You are coming with me? Even so. And I'm ashamed to think that my son is a coward, afraid to face the dangers of the unknown. Today was to have been my wedding day. But for your interference, I would have been married to Juliana Vecchi by now. A woman who is not worthy of your love. You have not the right to say that. Bid them release me from my bonds. Bid them turn the vessel about. I will be no son to you. Marco, you are my son. And for the sake of your mother whom I love, you shall find your manhood. You shall learn that life is not all idle pleasure. I know that this scheme was hatched by my uncle Matthew, the sour-faced old scoundrel. He would not dare brave this visit to Persia. You will see. Matthew, will you come into this cabin? I come down, brother. So, my uncle Matthew is aboard the vessel. Well, Marco Polo, it seems that you are a prisoner. Do you return to Venice with this vessel? Or do you cross the land with us to Persia, my uncle? I come with you to Persia. When I was your age, I journeyed to many strange lands with your father. I am ashamed that his son is a coward. You shall not call me coward. No one shall call me a coward. Marco, my son, a coward is a man who cannot subdue himself. Mm -hmm. Now bid me cut these bonds. Tell me that you will be my friend, that you will share with us the dangers of this expedition. Oh, I am so ill... I am not used to the motion of the ship. I fear that I am about to die. Oh, you will not die. See, my son, I cut the bonds which bind you. And by cutting those bonds, you seek my friendship. That you shall not have. I am your prisoner now, but the day will come when I will return to Venice to marry the lady of my choice. No, you, you are a fool, gulled by laughing eyes and a pretty face. But may have been your travels, reason will return to you. Ah. Turn not away from your father. Speak not to me. Oh, I am dying. Would that the vessel would sink beneath me. I am in agony. You but feel the pangs of seasickness, my son. On the morrow, you shall feel better. We shall leave you now. But remember, all this is being done for your sake. The sea grew rougher, and Marco Polo was ill and miserable. After a few days, however, the vessel found its way to calm waters, and the young man began to feel considerably better. Then he appeared on deck, where he was greeted by his servant, Benno. Marco Polo, my master, 
I am glad to set eyes on you. Why, Benno, you old rascal. What are you doing on this vessel? Why have you not been in attendance upon me? By your father's orders, a stranger was placed in attendance on you. I believe you have been very ill. Oh, so ill that I thought I was about to die. Where is my father? He stands below with the master of the vessel. They are partaking of food. Uh, strangely enough, I am hungry, Benno. But tell me, what are you doing here? Are you also going to Persia? Your father said that I was to accompany you to Persia. Oh, Benno, is there not some way in which we may escape from this vessel? I must find some way to return to Venice. Oh, Marco Polo, how can you return to Venice? Why do you quarrel with your father? He is a fine man and he wishes you well. But he shall not bend me to his will. <sighs> I am enjoying the fresh air of the sea breeze. <laughs> All the Polos are great travelers. Do you not feel the call of strange lands? No, I wish to return to Venice. Oh, what a pity, Marco Polo. Strange sights are to be seen. Eastern princes, beautiful princesses. Did you say beautiful princesses? Oh, I believe the princesses of the East are of a matchless beauty. And you are well favored, Marco Polo. Hmm, well, I... I have been admired by fair women. Mm, but uh, no women as fair as you see in Persia. Oh, I wish to return to Venice. Seek not to tempt me, Benno. Oh, I do not seek to tempt you, Marco Polo. But I have heard your father and your uncle tell many strange tales of the wonders they have beheld. Great castles built of gold and silver. Oh, and beautiful so. maidens clad in silks and rare satin. Oh, diamonds, rubies, emeralds to feast the eyes upon. Strange sights. You know, Benno... There was a time when I lay ill, when I thought that as soon as I had the strength, I would come up here and hurl myself into the sea. But since listening to you, I... I like the idea of traveling, seeing strange lands, meeting strange people. The desire to travel, to explore is in your blood, Marco Polo. Go then, seek out your father. Tell him that you will go willingly to Persia. There are many dangers to be faced, many adventures which will befall you. Dangers and adventures. Something stirs within my blood. I will tell you a secret, Benno. Perhaps in my heart of hearts, I shall enjoy this visit to Persia. But my father and my uncle must not know. They will not think that they have bent me to their will. You are right. They must never know, Marco Polo. Uh, but you will not make yourself miserable. You will strive to enjoy this experience. I will enjoy it, I know, but now I am hungry. I have not eaten real food for many days. Oh, oh, oh go below, Marco Polo. When you come to the first door on your right, you will find food which will satisfy your hunger. Very well, I shall go to eat. Remember, not a word to my father or my uncle. No. They will not think that they have tamed me. Remember? <laughs> Benno, you have done well. Nasty <laughs> Nicolo. Did you hear what Marco Polo said? We heard. Did we not, Matthew? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we heard. We were behind that awning. And I'm beginning to think that mayhap Marco Polo is not as bad as I thought. He is a Polo. He has the blood of adventurers in his veins, Matthew. We shall yet live to be proud of him. Ah, we must not be too sure. He is proud and stubborn. But he must not let us know that we have tamed him. Oh, my heart is happy, brother. Marco Polo will not fail us. Ah, that remains to be proved. We shall see what we shall see. Marco Polo began to take an interest in his surroundings, and gradually he became very friendly with his father and his uncle. At long last, they reached the port of Beermut. Then beasts of burden were procured, and native bearers and the little party started their long journey overland to Persia. For many days, they traveled across the trackless desert, till at last they came within sight of a huge castle built high on the side of a mountain. Marco Polo walked with his father and his uncle at the head of a little procession. And then suddenly, Niccolo Polo called a halt. Oh, we will 
Well, stop here. Look you, Matthew. See that castle on the mountain? Yes, a castle of ill repute. Why, it is the biggest castle I have ever seen. Built behind a veritable wall of rock. Uh, what prince lives there, father? A prince by the name of Loadin. He is better known as the old man of the mountain. By all reports, a wild and lawless prince. We have traveled these many days without seeing other human beings than our servants. I crave for some adventure. Oh, patience, Marco. We will meet with adventure soon enough. Mm, I thought we would have uh, excitement on this voyage instead of this tiresome traveling by day and night. Well, let us proceed upon our way. Uh, a moment. First, let us question Benno. He speaks the language of these people. He will know the story of the old man of the mountain. Come forward, Benno. I come, Master Matthew. Uh, that castle is owned by the Prince of Lowerden? Uh, yes. The bearers tell me he is a wealthy prince who keeps a large army. He makes his wealth by robbing passers-by. We would do well to go around the foot of that mountain, my masters. If we fall into the hands of Prince Lowerdin, he will rob us of our goods and show no mercy. Uh, tell me more about this, Prince Benno. How is it you know these many things? Oh, I have made many trips with your father before. This prince is known as the Old Man of the Mountain. Oh? He holds that mountain fortress against all comers. It is said that the interior of the castle is built of gold, silver, and precious stones. Precious stones? All treasures which have been robbed from travelers. They say that the Khan of Persia has tried many times to bring about the downfall of the Old Man of the Mountain, but always he has failed. Would the Khan of Persia be grateful to us if we brought about the downfall of the Old Man of the Mountain? Oh, in truth, he would be grateful, but we are a small party. How could we bring about the downfall of the Old Man of the Mountain? Brave not, Marco. We do not wish to make enemies. We wish to make friends. Come, let us proceed with our journey. See. Armed horsemen are approaching us. We are being surrounded. Adventures at last. These men wear the green turbans. They are the soldiers of the old man of the mountain. This means that we shall all die. Stand fast. We will not show fear. Fear.